a tutorial on DJing with Ableton Live. Um, today we're just going to focus on a very simple uh, DJ setup in Live that just involves two audio channels and just mixing in between them to emulate a DJ setup with uh, two turntables and a mixer. So what you're going to want to do is first of all you can see that with Live's default template it gives you an audio track and a MIDI track. So what you're going to want to do is get rid of this MIDI track, make a new audio track by right clicking and saying insert audio track or you can hit command T or control T. So now that you have your two decks you can go ahead and rename those if you'd like to deck 1 and deck 2. Just to further illustrate that it's kind of a DJ-esque setup. So then you're going to want to pick some tracks for each channel. In this case I'll just put one on each. So um, let's pick some tracks here. And we'll put that there. So now that we have these two tracks, now what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to go ahead and warp these tracks so that they stay in time when you're playing them at the same time. And they don't go all out of sync. So you just want to double click the clip and you can see that it opens the waveform along with all these giant menacing yellow squares. You don't want these. So you're going to want to zoom in on the first bar or where it says 1 right here. And you'll see that there's a menacing yellow square right on this first hit. Well, I mean, there's all this stuff in the negative zone. You, you really don't want that, obviously, because then the track won't play at the very first hit of the track, but rather on the first bar that Ableton thinks is the first bar of the track. So what you're going to want to do is shift-click on this first yellow square and drag to the right so it starts dragging the waveform out of the negative zone, as I like to call it. And you're going to want to have this first hit right here, this first transient, on the first bar so that live is starting the song on the first hit of the song or starting whatever you know what I mean so but you still got the, all these crazy yellow squares to deal with you don't want those so you're gonna want to click the first yellow square which is actually called a warp marker which basically anchors a transient to a bar in Ableton or to a yeah, specific beat in Ableton. You're going to right-click this first warp marker and say warp from here, parentheses straight. That'll make it so that there are no more warp markers and only the first one. Also, another thing you're going to want to do is you can see here where it says segment BPM. It says 128.02. Well, I mean, I don't think any artist would make their song at 128.02 BPM. So we can safely say that this track is probably at 128 BPM, or around there. So what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to change your master tempo to 128 or whatever this says right here, because then you're not going to have any loss in audio quality. Um, another important thing to do is down here where it says Beats, you're going to want to change that to Complex Pro. That makes it so that when you change tempo, when the track is fully warped and you start to change tempo, you won't hear any significant loss in audio quality. Because you definitely don't want that if you're mixing between genres of different BPMs and whatnot. So, most, well, not most people, but some people would think that you would go about warping every 16 bars or so and warping in a forward manner. But that's not exactly the best way to go about it because if you do that then you'll fix the track entirely but then you'll just kind of be pushing your problems on and on till the end and that would probably take a while so what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to scroll in towards the end and you can see that these transients are kick, or where the kicks are and those should be lined up with downbeats here in live so when you mouse over where a kick drum should be, or around that area, Live has already created what's called a pseudo warp marker, which is basically where Live thinks that a kick drum would be without actually creating a warp marker. So if you double click those, it'll create a warp marker, which will anchor the audio. Um, as you can see here, it's not exactly on beat, 
So what you can do is shift click, shift left click on this warp marker and drag it so that this downbeat or this kick drum is where the warp marker is. And then you can drag the warp marker over to where this kick drum should actually be, which is on this beat. And if you zoom out, you can see that there's another one of those yellow, yellow squares. So, and then you'll see that the track is pretty much lined up. You can see that these kick drums are lined up pretty well. And before actually playing the track, you're going to want to, you know, give it a good looking at just to see if it's lined up pretty well. And. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad to me. So, to give it, to put it to the test, you're gonna want to turn the metronome on and play the track. It sounds pretty lined up at the beginning. And then you'll just kind of want to skim through the track. track is very decently warped and should hold up against another song and stay in time with it. So then you're going to want to go to your second track and see there's those crazy yellow squares again. So again go to the first bar and you'll see that there's no waveform in the negative space because I don't I guess live guessed right this time. But again, you're going to want to just zoom in and make sure that this kick is lined up, which it is. And again, right-click the first warp marker, warp from here, parentheses, straight, zoom out, go to the end area of the track, and just make sure these kick drums are lined up. As you can see, this one's a little off, but live successfully guessed where this kick drum is, creating a pseudo warp marker. So again, we're going to double-click pseudo warp marker and just left click and drag it over and you can see that the kick drum is pretty much lined up if you really want to fine tune it you can shift left click and drag the waveform accordingly but in this case it looks pretty good to me and again you're just going to want to give it a quick look through and uh... yeah that seems pretty good to me but the metronome knows all so all lined up pretty well. So again, I'm going to want to change this to Complex Pro. Or just to demonstrate, I'll show you the loss in audio quality when you change the uh, master tempo. Notice how it becomes very lossy and just loses a lot of its quality. And when you change it to Complex Pro, It doesn't become as lossy as it was. It, of course, it's not the same quality as it would have been if you were playing it at the original tempo, but it's still a lot better than using beats mode. Um, so now that these two tracks are nice and warped, ready to go, you can uh, click this deck and set it to A, which means that if the crossfader moves to the left or in the A direction, more of this audio will be played than this one, and you're going to want to set this to B. So, I just want to start fire off this clip, and turn the metronome off, of course. Start this clip. Notice how they're perfectly in sync. And there you have it two tracks that are perfectly, maybe not perfectly, but pretty well warped and in sync with each other. 
And that's pretty much how a standard DJ setup in live would work. And also, of course, you'd have more tracks in your uh, in each deck, because I don't think any DJ could successfully use two tracks. So yeah, good luck and happy warping.